Right now might just be the best time to enjoy a fresh black hole size comparison. In just the last few days, two major discoveries have been announced that shake the foundation of everything that we thought we knew. On the tiny end of the spectrum, the Gaia mission just discovered two black holes right here in the Milky Way. One of them, Gaia BH1, is three times closer to us than any black hole we knew about at only 1500 light years away. And it's really tiny too, with a radius of only 28 kilometers. The same cannot be said for the other major discovery. A brand new gravitational lensing technique just measured what is the biggest black hole ever discovered, and not by just a little bit. At double the maximum size that we even thought black holes could be, it straight up breaks existing models. We'll start our black hole size comparison with the small nearby one that was just discovered and work our way up to the new incomprehensibly large reigning champ of the universe. I always love these size comparisons in an existential dread inducing, wow I'm really insignificant sort of way. Us Americans will do just about anything to avoid using the metric system, so it's only fitting that the sun is the standard yardstick used to compare the size and mass of black holes. If you put the Earth right up next to the sun, I would get mad at you. But it's okay, I wouldn't be mad for long. I wouldn't even have time to notice just how ridiculously gigantic the sun really is. 99.8% of all of the mass in the solar system is in the sun. It is huge. Gaia BH1, our newly discovered neighbor, has 9.6 suns worth of mass, but black holes are really dense, so its radius is only 28 kilometers. Compared to New York City, it's about this big but it weighs 3 million times more than the Earth does. If you could take the sun and compress it down past its Schwarzschild radius of less than 2 miles or 3 kilometers, I would also get mad at you, but now the sun would be a black hole. It would be really small and you probably couldn't see it except for its condensed gravity warping light from the stars behind it. If you really wanted to find it, you could launch another sun at it and enjoy watching the intense elliptical orbit. This is how we know where to find the black hole at the center of the galaxy known as Sagittarius A star. In this image captured by the Event Horizon Telescope, you can see the glow of its accretion disk as it superheats the matter that it's slowly consuming. If Sag Sagittarius A star was 40 times more massive than our sun, that would be hard to wrap your head around. But it's not 40 times more massive, or 400, or 4000. It's a super massive black hole at over 4 million times the mass of our sun. Its gravity is so intense that it helps glue the entire Milky Way together, and that means that in the grand scheme of things, it is really, really tiny because this is only the beginning. NGC 7469 is 12.2 million times the mass of the sun. M106 is 39 million suns. NGC 5548 clocks in at 67 million suns. With its core hosting a 230 million solar mass beast, the Andromeda galaxy is right in our stellar neighborhood. Almost all galaxies are moving away from us as the universe expands, but not Andromeda. We are on a collision course, and in about 3 billion years, Andromeda will merge with the Milky Way galaxy. Once everything settles down, we will be left with a single, much larger galaxy called Milkdromeda. Stars are spaced so insanely far apart that we will probably be totally fine, but the black holes at the center of each galaxy will eventually merge in an energetic frenzy of gravitational waves. Next up is the black hole at the center of one of my favorites, the Sombrero Galaxy, at the heart of which lies the closest black hole that hits 1 billion solar masses. We humans are hilariously bad at imagining big numbers. We all know that a billion is a lot more than a million, but it never really sinks in. If you were to count up by one with each passing second, to reach one million, it would take you about 11 and a half days. To keep counting until you reach one billion, it would take you almost 32 years. So with that in mind, let's step up to four billion times the mass of the sun with Hercules A. It's at the center of a galaxy over a thousand times more massive than our own Milky Way, and it's also a thousand times heavier than our black hole. It chews up so much matter that just the bits flung away from its general vicinity produce a jet of matter reaching out into space for over one million light years of distance. Next is M87 at 7.2 billion suns. 
NGC 3842 at 9.7 billion suns. It's kind of funny that galaxies that we find really interesting get really cool names like the Sombrero Galaxy, Hercules, Andromeda, and other ones are named like someone just fell asleep on their keyboard. Oh, and since most galaxies have a single supermassive black hole at the center, it's usually just named after the galaxy. At least that's easy to keep track of. Next up, NGC 1600, located about 200 million light years away from us, followed by OJ287. This is 18 billion times the mass of the sun, but it's so big that it has another black hole orbiting it that is 100 million times the mass of the sun, completing one orbit every 12 years. If this smaller black Black hole were placed in the middle of our solar system, it would easily engulf the Sun, Mercury, Venus, and the Earth. And if the bigger one were placed here instead, well, saying it would swallow all of the planets is such an understatement that it's not even a useful comparison. And if you think about the black hole that we started with that just shadowed New York City, and that tiny thing weighs 3 million Earths, and then you see this one and try to imagine what that's like, APM 0827 plus, uh, it's 23 billion suns of mass. It's also a quasar, meaning that gas circles around it so fast and heats up so much from friction that it shines up to one quadrillion times the brightness of the sun. Black holes themselves are the darkest thing in the universe. No light at all can escape once it enters, but in the form of a quasar, it becomes the single brightest thing in the universe. Black holes holes are definitely overachievers. I bet their parents are proud. And that brings us to what has been up until now hailed the king of black holes, an absolute legend, TON618. It's over 40 billion suns worth of mass, and here it is next to the solar system. I don't even know anymore. It's at least three washing machines long. That's all I've got. Now, before anyone flips out, if you look up the mass of TON618, you'll see source after source listing its solar mass as 66 billion rather than 4 40 billion. Older estimates based on spectral line analysis did come up with this figure, but newer ones simply conclude that it's a minimum of 40 billion suns, and a lot of sources are slowly being updated to reflect that. TON618 is also up there with the oldest things we've discovered. The light you see in the photos has been traveling for 10.8 billion years. We see it at this massive size as it was back when the universe was only 3 billion years old. What has it been doing in the 10.8 billion years that have passed since? How big is it now? TON618 happens to also be an incredibly bright quasar, which creates a bit of a mystery. It's probably at the center of a galaxy like all of the other black holes on the list, but it just glares so bright that there's really no way to know for sure. We can't see if there's a galaxy or not. It's like trying to read the clock on a microwave with someone shining all of the spotlights in the world on your face. So that brings us to the final black hole on our list, the new king of the castle. Here is Phoenix A, 100 billion solar masses with a diameter up to 100 times the distance from the Sun to Pluto. If you wanted to travel around the circumference of Phoenix A, moving at the speed of light, it would take nearly 72 days to make your way around. It's so big that a new category has been proposed for it, which would make it not a supermassive black hole, but a slab, a stupendously large black hole. Calculations of its size break the upper limit of what scientists have thought to be possible. Nobody expected anything to exist that was bigger than about 50 billion solar masses, half of this size, and just a hair bigger than TON618. There's no reason that a black hole can't grow this big, but there shouldn't have been enough time for a normal black hole to chew through enough matter to grow this big. The universe just isn't that old yet. So Phoenix A might be evidence that primordial black holes exist. A primordial black hole would be one that formed not from a collapsed star like the rest, but from dense pockets of gas that might have collapsed immediately after the Big Bang when the universe was much denser. They would have had more time to grow and starting under completely different conditions could change everything. I'd like to replay this black hole comparison start to finish without any pauses in order to put all of this in perspective. But first, for the sake of honesty and accuracy, it's important to acknowledge that scientists have a really tough job 
job trying to measure and communicate numbers found at the bleeding edge of physics to the general public. These figures are the best estimates at the time, and based on current data, they seem to fit reality. But science is not a list of answers. That has never been the point. It's a tool for investigating the world around us, a tool that is always improving, and it's not afraid to burn everything down if a better model comes along. But it also does a really, really, really good job of leading us to the right answers. Now let's roll that beautiful existential dread footage. Stupendously large. A stupendously large. A stupendous. Oh my god. A stupendously large black hole.